Iron deficiency chlorosis is one of the worst problems you can get in soybeans. So today we wanted to talk about what the problem is exactly, why it's caused, and what you can do to solve this issue on your farm. Well, when you look at soybean fields, sometimes you'll see yellow areas out in the middle of a green soybean field. And you think, what's going on in that yellow area? When you look closer at the leaves and you see yellow leaves that still have green veins, chances are you could be looking at iron deficiency chlorosis. The reason why this happens, everybody always used to think, oh, it's just high soil pH. And yes, you need to have high soil pH before you probably have this issue. But what we also find is if you have high salt and high nitrate, it makes the problem even worse. And what it really comes down to, it's iron deficiency chlorosis is the name. It's not that the soil doesn't have iron, it's just that the plant doesn't get that iron in the right form. And so we end up with issues. It looks like we're completely short of iron in that area of the field because our plants have turned yellow. Well, we've got iron out there. We just need to get more, right, Darren? Well, there's a few different things going on. First of all, if you've got high salts, you've got high nitrates, and you've got a rising soil pH, chances are you're looking at a drainage problem. And for many guys, they want to know what can I do this year and we'll definitely cover you know what you can do this year because even if you get drainage tile installed underneath that area of the field you're not going to fix it in one year it's going to take a few years to get that problem corrected but that is the long-term fix adding some more drainage tile now you may say wait a minute I've got pattern tile in my field but I still have these spots here and there that's very common and very possible in your case what you need to do in those areas is just put your tile lines a lot closer. Maybe you have 50 foot spacings with your tile lines, or maybe you have 100 foot spacings. You may need to have 10 or 15 foot spacings in those specific spots in your field to try and get the water to infiltrate a little quicker and to try and cure up those problems. Now the good news here is if you've got pattern tile out there and you're still having problems, that tells me you probably have really heavy soil. You probably have very good land. Okay, so that's great. And if you can just get a little bit more tile out there, long term, your prospects look great. I can't tell you how much it's helpful to start with good ground because to build new sure, soil sure. takes a I long know, time. I know. Yeah, I we're know. talking I about we're talking about my <laughs> field here because this field before I purchased it had decades of erosion going on. So there's virtually zero topsoil. So we're working on building that up over time. But the good news here, Brian, is I don't have any iron deficiency chlorosis <laughs> in my field at least. Well, that's true. And you know Know, when you don't have iron deficiency chlorosis, you don't have a whole lot of worries yet, though, Darren. <laughs> and here's the thing. When we talk about Darren's ground right here, he does have some high pH spots. So at some point, he could start to see some iron deficiency chlorosis. So yes, we're going to get some drain tile in and solve those problems long term. But let's just say that Darren planted some soybeans this year and he sees iron deficiency chlorosis. What can you do then at that point? Okay, well, once you see it, you've already caused damage to your crop. And in our experience, what we've seen is, yeah, you can go ahead and green those soybeans back up. But chances are the yield damage was already done and you're not going to get those beans to yield the same as the beans that never turned yellow. Right, so the reason why I bring this all up and, and presented it that way is we just want you to understand you can green green your beans up. Go throw a whole bunch of iron out there. There are ways to well, do this. Be careful about this whole well, bunch, Yeah, but, but I'm just saying some. You can do some foliar feeding and stuff and it'll green it up and you might get a little bit of yield boost. But Darren's point is you've already given up most of your yield. So what can you do ahead of time? Well, what you need to do, if you know where those areas are, and chances are they're going to be the same spots in your field year after year. Maybe that spot grows a little bit and gets a little bigger, or maybe it contracts a little bit, gets a little bit smaller, depending on what the weather conditions are. But what you can do is put a product down like green bean or soy green right at planting in furrow. You can put these products down. They aren't cheap to use, and you're probably going to spend $15 to $20 an acre, maybe a little bit more, depending on your conditions and how much of a rate you need to use. But you can put those products out and you can keep your beans looking good the whole way through. And we have seen some positive yield increases when we're doing that. Now, if you're doing that across the whole field, how much of an increase am I gonna get? I don't know what your return on investment is going to be. If you had iron deficiency chlorosis spots on 50% of your field, I'd say your ROI is gonna be great. If you said, well, I have one acre of IDC spots and I'm gonna put these products on a whole 100 acre field, I'd say, oh, your chances of a great return on investment are probably pretty slim. Well, if you wanna step even further back than the day you plant, you can go back to when you selected varieties for your farm, which could have even been last fall. If you pick the right varieties, some varieties are very tolerant to iron deficiency chlorosis. The problem is if you're just picking IDC varieties, that's a much, much, much shorter list than if you didn't have IDC problems. My point is, get that drainage fixed, then you don't even have to worry about it. But there are good IDC varieties, and you certainly can use soy green or green bean 
if you want to solve the problem at planting time. And all those fixes, if you have 10% of your acres with IDC issues, then you're probably going to get a decent return on investment more years than not. Okay, so once again, iron deficiency chlorosis is not necessarily a problem with lack of iron in the soil. It's just when we add high soil pH and especially add high nitrate and high salt problems, now we've got an issue with not enough uptake of iron into the plant or even if the iron does get into the plant, it doesn't end up in the right form and we've got a problem. Well, soil conditions can keep getting worse if you don't fix them, and so can your weed pressure. If you don't wipe out our Weed of the Week, it can really spread. Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? 